Uh, we're going to worship Jesus, uh, but before we do that, I just wanted to share briefly, uh, maybe just to, uh, just to help equip you for this time, uh, to share some distinctives of, uh, of what we're about as a community, um, and particularly about, because we are, uh, we are a prophetic community, we're a prophetic people, uh, and remember the, the fivefold ministry from Ephesians 4.11, apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers, their role is to equip, equip everybody to be like Jesus. So if you say, I'm really prophetic, your job is not to be prophetic, your job is to be like Jesus, that's the goal. You might be a real you know, pastoral person, the, your goal in life is not to be the best pastor, your goal in life is to be the best Jesus. Yeah, Uh, um, but there's something of all of us being, you know, prophetic and really when we come together to to sing, to praise God, to worship, we have an expectation that God is going to speak to us and move amongst us and maybe direct us and every single time we come together, the expectation is it's going to be different. Oftentimes when we start leading, uh, you know, as I do sometimes, it's like, you don't know where God's going to take things. So that's why oftentimes there'll be, uh, you know, prophetic songs that come out and then the guys up the back there are listening and then typing up the words. So you might even see words come up on the screen and you go, wow, I've never heard that song. Neither have they. Um, <laughs> because it literally got written right in that moment as things are happening. But, but there is those times where, you know, where there's this kind of flow of the prophetic in worship. But the goal of worship is to acknowledge worth. So literally in the old English, it's worth-ship. So he's saying worship, what does worship mean? It means to acknowledge worth, to give worth. So when we worship God, we are acknowledging His worth, who He is and how amazing He is. So even if it might help you to go, oh, that's right, worship is, is worth, it's worth-ship in what we're doing. And so oftentimes God can have an agenda in our corporate worship time. And that agenda, he might speak prophetically beforehand. We have some idea of where he's leading or where he's going, but sometimes not. So he might be directing us, revealing us. He might just want to reveal us in that moment. He might want to reveal something of himself in that moment. He might want to release truth, release grace, release anointing, release power, draw us into corporate intercession to pray for our church, the region, our nation, globally, whatever it might be. So just knowing that in that flow, it's always that we're, we're leaning in and listening. What are you up to today, God? Even as Jesus, he only did what he saw the Father doing, which means he was just looking, Father, what are you doing? And that's kind of what we're doing when we're corporately worshiping together. But our job is to get on board with what he's doing. So we have to, first thing we've got to do, we've got to kind of tune out, maybe from our morning or our week, and tune into the Lord. I would encourage you to try and do that before you come along, if possible. But I also understand that you may have had uh, a bunch of young children sleep over your house for your son's eighth birthday party yesterday. (laughs) And so it's harder to engage sometimes when you you arrive. Um, But, you know, that's probably not all of us. Um, But really to come in just to be expectant, I want to hear. And maybe you're someone like, I don't don't feel like I hear from God. This is a great opportunity to practice hearing from God. Say, God, just just show me what you're doing here. And then you might hear someone else sing it out. It might be the direction that you go. But this is a practice and a learning time as well. You don't need to be somewhere. You don't need to be able to sing like someone else can sing. You might not get the same pictures that someone else gets. But this is opportunity where God wants to reveal himself to you in a new and fresh way. Sometimes you might find that we sing the same thing over and over and over and over again. And over again and over again and over again. Yeah, it's just, it's just. That, that repetition in worship can be, um, have different reasons for why we do that. But if we feel like, and, and often it's the team that's leading, feel like God is just saying, this is what the focus is. If we feel like God is wanting to draw us into something, then there's a waiting, and we wait on that until we feel like God's accomplished what He wanted to accomplish. So if we say, we feel like God wants to accomplish something this morning, well, Lord, we, we want you to accomplish what you want to accomplish. So we're just going to wait until you accomplish what you're going to accomplish or desire to do so. So sometimes that can take longer. 
uh, whatever it might be. Um, but if you find repetitive worship maybe frustrating or, or annoying or difficult, can I encourage you then to enter in as quickly as possible and in agreement, not ignorance, like, I don't know what's going on, so I'll just do it. But it's like, oh, no, well, I'm just going to agree. I don't see what that person sees. I don't see what's going on, but I'm going to agree and I'm going to trust the Lord, so I'm going to enter in and start singing out because the whole process will be significantly faster. <laughs> so literally, you might find like they're singing this line again. We've just sung this song three times. Like, oh man, what's the thing? And it's like, this is taking forever. Why is it taking so long? This person's here like, when, when is Brad going to get on board with this? I'm just, do I have to sing this again? He's not listening, Lord. It's like, <laughs> I'm sure no one's specifically looking at you and judging you. But it's like if I got up and go, okay, okay, I'm just going to, yes, Lord, I just agree and I enter in, yes, Lord, we're singing out what you're doing. And oh, praise the Lord, we can move on. (laughs) So just be aware. We could get this all done in like five minutes if we were just in, yes, Lord, we're in, bang, agreement, let's go, whoo, accomplished, move on. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So repetition in worship can often be because we're waiting for people to get on board so that no one's left behind. Because that's the heart of love. You might find that what, what you might be finding frustrating is actually people waiting on you to enter in. And again, I'm not, this is not a pressure and expectation, but it's just an acknowledgement of what's going on. It's not because like, oh, we just love saying the same thing over and over again. And we love playing the same song 10 times. It's like, it's, it's no, oh, there's something in that. There's a substance. There's a word the Lord's wanting to release. And we don't want to miss this opportunity to, to hear and to receive. And we don't want to leave everyone behind. Because if we didn't, if, the, if it wasn't corporate, then it'd be like, oh, I could just go and worship. Um, we might as well just pull out our iPods, go find our own space of the property and worship for as long or as little as you want. And because it's corporate, and there's often a corporate word and a corporate thing the Lord wants to do. So I just want to encourage you. And again, don't just go, oh, I guess I have to, you know, or the person on keys is going to be looking at me. Hurry up. No, that's not going to happen. But it's something to say, but, well, Lord, if you... If you have something to do, if you have something to say, if you have something for me to see, if you want to reveal something in me, Lord, I I come into this time in agreement. And not just, again, well, well, I I don't really feel it this morning. I'm not really seeing anything. You're corporate. So lean into and and engage with what's happening in the room. Because it's worship, and this can take a while to grasp. Worship is not about you. Should we just say it again? Worship is not about me. (laughs) It's not about how I feel. It's not about now. Does the Lord not care about? Absolutely, He does. And so it matters that my heart is engaged. It matters that. And, and, And the Lord cares about my heart. So He's like, man, I know you've been having a hard week, but come into this place. Because it's actually in the place of worship that you'll find rest, that you'll find answers, that you'll find breakthrough, that you'll find understanding. It's actually in that place. Well, I can't enter in because I've had this really hard week. And yet if I entered in, that whole week would make sense to me. All that pain that I'm carrying would have some sense of the healing balm of the Lord because I come into his presence. Amen? All right. Let's worship Jesus then.